Good morning, King's Kids. My name is Miss Christina. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible lesson this beautiful Sunday morning. So excited to be here today. To all the parents, guardians, and everyone else watching, I do encourage you to post comments, pictures down below. I'd love to see your responses to my questions throughout the lesson plan and just to see how you're all doing. I sure do miss you guys, and I'm so excited to stay connected. So as we go into it, let's go ahead and grab our Bibles, most important book, um, read it every single day. Uh, and we're going to actually flip to Ephesians 2. You can flip there with me. And as we flip there, um, I have a question. How many of you guys have seen those before and after commercials or photos where you see somebody before a six week program and then afterwards you see them and they've lost weight or they look healthier. Sometimes you see dramatic change and sometimes you don't see change at all. What are some before and after items that you could think of that would show either dramatic change or just a little bit of change? Go ahead and share that with somebody nearby. So Ephesians 2 is a perfect example of a before and after story, but it might not be what you're thinking. See, Paul is telling the Ephesians and all the believers who they were before they were saved and who they are after they were saved. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read Ephesians 2 verse 1. And you who he has quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what does it mean to be dead in trespasses or to be dead in sin? So a long, long time ago, God gave Adam and Eve in the garden one rule. Don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Did they listen? No. Adam and Eve both disobeyed God and they ate from the tree of knowledge, bringing upon themselves both physical and spiritual death. So it separated us from God. It says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So by Adam and Eve disobeying God, we also are separated from God because sin is in us when we're born. Just like you are born from your mom and your dad, and you have traits from both of them. So when we're born into this world, although we are born physically alive in our bodies today, we are spiritually dead, and we need Jesus to be alive in him. That way we aren't separated from God anymore. So what does it mean to be alive in Christ? Good question. What do you think it means? When a person is introduced to the good news about Jesus Christ, they're being invited to have spiritual life. So what is the good news? If you said Jesus, you are right. Jesus was blameless, sinless, and perfect in every way. And in Jesus, we're able to have our faith in what he's done on the cross. And we are able to receive forgiveness of our sins and eternal life with God. So a couple of scriptures to look at. First Peter 3.18, if you can turn there. All right. For Christ also has suffered for sins the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So he died in the flesh, but he came back to life in the Spirit, giving us eternal life. One other scripture is going to be 
Hebrews 9, 27 through 28. And it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And the last scripture I want to read to you is 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And that says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So before, when we are dead in Christ, we don't look really pretty. We're dead in our sins. We're dead in our spiritual life. But after, in our before and after pictures, we are alive in Christ. And he gives us eternal life. That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to go ahead and close in prayer. You can bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, we ask that you give us a blessed Sunday today. I'm grateful that we're able to come together. We're able to learn your word. We're able to worship you. Praise you, Lord, for giving us eternal life. Now we're able to share the good news with everybody around us. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today.